Man, you'll not come back and say that again. If you said something before, and you know, when you face God in eternity, he'll say, well done for what you have said. You'll come back and say exactly the same thing. Check up in your life. Are there things you said before in preaching, in lifestyle, in counseling, but now because of reaction and because of the suffering of persecution, you come back, you cannot say that again. You're a jellyfish. You don't have any backbone. You can't stand for the thing that is right. You're looking at the faces of men, whether they praise you or they blame you. But if you're going to be a man, a woman, standing for the truth transparently, and the only thing you stand for in life is the truth, what you said before, come back, say it again, and let the truth come out from you. Let people know that suffering or no suffering, persecution or no persecution, losing friends or not losing friends, what you said by the Spirit of God before, you say that same thing again. That's the gospel. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Look at Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 23. Whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you. Or our brethren be inquired of thee are the messengers of the churches and the glory of Christ. The reason why you stand on the gospel solidly, steadfastly, without being shaken by winds or storms in life, is that you're not seeking your own glory. You're seeking only the glory of Christ. Our commitment to the glory of Christ. Three things. Number one, preaching the gospel of the grace of God. Preaching, proclaiming, publishing the gospel of the grace of God. Number two, proclaiming the goal of the goodness of God. Number three, preventing the gainsayers for the glory of God. The gainsayers are the opposers of the truth. And they will do everything to oppose the truth, to hinder people from getting saved, and to hinder people from getting to heaven. Now, if you love the souls of the people you are preaching to, you will not allow the gainsayers to take the wind out of you and to make you compromise the gospel, then you labor in vain, then the gainsayers will be successful in hindering the people from getting to heaven. We prevent the gainsayers for the glory of God. God. Number one, preaching the gospel of the grace of God. Acts chapter 20, verse 24. Acts chapter 20, verse 24. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. Do you know your cause? My cause, my calling, my assignment, my duty, my responsibility, and I know it's mine, and it was given to me, and I need to watch over it. Winds will blow, storms will come, 
opposers will rage, gainsayers will discharge, and many things will happen. But Paul the apostle said, and you ought to say, none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. You'll finish with joy. Yeah. I said you will finish with joy. And the ministry which I have received, the ministry which I have received, the ministry which I have received. You see, there are people who don't know they have received a ministry. And they have received that ministry from the Lord. And you can tell because they walk carelessly, they act carelessly, they are fearful, they are timid, and they are trembling, and they do not know that the Lord who are giving them that ministry is with them. But Paul the Apostle said, there is one goal I have in mind, and there is one direction I am going, and there is one ideal I stand for that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify, to preach, to declare, to teach the gospel of the grace of God. I pray that that same firmness and courage the Lord will give unto you. That once you know this, the way, walk ye therein, nothing will shift you in Jesus' name. And once you know, this is what God has called you to do. And this is what he will reward you for on the final day. And this is the reason he has pleasure in you. And he will answer your prayer every time. And then you set your face as a flint in the goal, in the place you ought to reach. Nothing will move you again in Jesus' name. You will stand. Who am I talking to there? You will stand in the power of the Lord in Jesus' name. Look at number two there. Number two there is proclaiming the goal of the goodness of God. You know about the goodness of God that he brings to people. He answers prayer. He heals the sick. He raises the dead. He gives progress. He gives answers to their prayers because of the goodness of the Lord. But there is a goal, there is a reason, there is a purpose, there is a destination for that goodness of the Lord. And you are proclaiming that goal of the goodness of God. In Romans chapter 2 verse 4, Romans chapter 2, reading from verse 4, or despises thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. You are proclaiming that every time and you are telling the people God is good all the time and his goodness is bringing healing to you. His goodness is bringing favor to you. His goodness is bringing joy in your life. His goodness is giving children to new couples. His uh, goodness is bringing, uh, you know, life, uh, even abundant life to people everywhere. But this is the goal of that goodness of God. It is to lead you to repentance. We will not forget repentance just because you are getting healed, just because you are getting delivered, just because you are having the goodness of God. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. The reason for that goodness of the Lord going everywhere is to lead us to repentance, proclaiming the goal of the goodness of God. We're looking at number three here. Number three, preventing the gainsayers for the glory of God. Preventing the gainsayers. There are people who are bold and bold-faced. They're gainsayers. They want to bring corruption into the gospel. And if you fidget, if you tremble, 
if you are fretful, if you shake, if you look down, if you cry, if you say, what about this? Now, what are we going to do that will empower and fire that uh, those against sayers, they will corrupt everything of the gospel. They're serving the devil and they're committed to serving the devil till the end of their lives. But if those who don't have the Holy Spirit, they only have the human spirit, if they are bold, if you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is greater and higher than the human spirit. You also should be bold. If the people who are serving Satan are bold, those who are serving the God of heaven and the creator of the heavens and the earth should be bold and courageous and say, this is the calling of God, the gainsayer who has come to pollute, to pervert, and to prevent the gospel cannot be stronger than you are. I pray that the boldness and the courage of the Holy Spirit, the Lord will give unto you. What if every believer here, every believer listening to the message everywhere, every believer anywhere, everywhere in the world will become more bold than the messengers of the devil. They will fall before us in Jesus' name. As the Philistine fell, they will fall. A Jambres and Janice that opposed Moses as eventually they cleared out of the way. All those gainsayers were clear out of your way. You will preach the gospel in power. You will preach the gospel with authority. You will preach the gospel with mighty anointing. You will preach the gospel in Jesus' name. No man will be able to stand before you. As the almighty God was with Moses, he will be with you. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, the Lord will give unto you. All those Canaanites, all those Gensias that come and they form a confederacy and they think they will stop Joshua, they will not stop you. If you have to stop the sun and the moon like Joshua so that you can finish the battle of the Lord, every prayer you pray will be answered in Jesus' name. Look at Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. I'm reading here from verse 4. Galatians chapter 2. We're looking at verse 4. And that because a false brethren unawares brought in who came in privately, privately, to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Those gainsayers, they wanted to, you know, bottle them up, confine them, bring them into bondage, and then they'll make a little cage for them. That's where you are. If you ever step out, we will deal with you. They conquer you with fear. That fear is gone. It says they wanted to bring us into bondage. Look at verse 5. It says in verse 5, To whom we give place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Don't give the gifts a moment, a minute, an hour so that the truth of the gospel will abide with you in Jesus' name. Christ will live on the inside of you. Power will live on the inside of you. Courage will live on the inside of you. And when you stand, you're full of the gospel and the power of the gospel. And the power of the gospel will bring down every gainsayers against your life against your ministry, against your purpose, anything against your calling, the Lord will bring them down. Power. 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 
in your heart, in your soul, in your mind, in the way you go. Every Canaanite will clear out of your way. What are you? Stand up and pray. Let that power come. Let that authority come. Let that anointing fill your heart that every gainsayer will be destroyed before you in the mighty name of Jesus. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord, this is not the time to be timid, to be a coward, and to be shivering. This is the time that you take the gospel, the full gospel, the pure gospel, the unadulterated gospel, and the full gospel, and you take it everywhere where the power of the Holy Ghost in your life and evil will clear before you and everything that stands against you you will overcome in jesus name this is your time of power as the lord will make you the man the woman you ought to be and the lord has spoken unto us let's rise up to speak back to him the teaching is very clear, and the teaching is very impacting. There's much in this teaching that you need to go to God in prayer to ask for his strength, and ask for his wisdom, and ask for his grace so that we'll be able to live our lives in accordance to all these great revelations he has given and shown unto us through the teaching. We need to go to God in prayer. We ought to be fervent in our prayer tonight. Because this is a matter of uh, getting to the kingdom of God and anything that has to do with getting to the kingdom of God will uh, uh, excite anyone that is a true Christian. So we are praying tonight. We want to first of all thank the almighty God, glorify him, exalt him, and praise his holy name because of this great revelation we have gotten tonight. The unchangeable gospel. The gospel that cannot be uttered. The gospel that neither angels nor prophets can utter. It is not subject to anybody uttering the gospel. It is fixed. It is complete. It is, it is without any error. And the God of heaven expects that this same gospel, we will keep it like that. That's the gospel that transforms. That's the gospel that changes and gives men hope of eternal life. We thank our God and glorify God for these great revelations they have given unto us. Praise so brethren, let's pray and look unto the Lord and thank him very much for all this thing. In all over the globe, wherever you find yourself, the gospel is common. Whatever impact it had in people of old who are now in heaven, that's the impact it will have all over the world. Here in our country, outside our country, outside in, in Africa, outside the Africa and beyond. Wherever the gospel is received, it will have the same impact. It will make the same impact on the people that are receiving it. So if you have received the true gospel, check up your life. The evidence is that your life is changed. Your life is transformed. There is hope of eternal life. You like the things of God and you delight in righteousness. If that is not the case, that may not be the true gospel. It may be the gospel that's adulterated, the gospel that Paul the apostle called another gospel. You need to know that when you receive the true gospel, it changes your life. If that has not done that, my brother, don't be comfortable with that kind of gospel. Don't be comfortable with all that and experience. You may have gotten any other thing in the way of the gospel, but the way of the gospel, you have money, you have wealth, you have education, you have children, you have everything that this world can afford to make you comfortable here. But if you have to go beyond that to give you hope of eternal life, changing you, transforming you, the gospel is a pseudo gospel. It's not a complete gospel. You are healed slightly according to Isaiah. This is what you need to do tonight. You need to go back to Calvary. You need to look unto Jesus as your Savior. You need to look away from your sin and look unto him by faith. And the work of grace will be done according to the gospel that has given unto us. Those of us, that's the gospel we receive. That's the gospel you also receive. And that gospel that changed and transformed us is the true gospel. Keep it, preserve it, don't allow anybody to take it away from you. And by the grace of God, those of us who have received this gospel, there is a responsibility the Lord has placed upon us and because of the gospel. He has placed upon us the responsibility of conserving this gospel. We conserve the gospel by living it out. Your life, 
And everything you do is moderated and controlled by the gospel. And everything you are doing here, you won't do anything if you have really received the power of the true gospel and without the gospel. So we leave it out. And those who don't read the Bible, and those who don't believe the Bible, when they see you or see me and see our lives, they change life, the godly life, the righteous life, the uh, life of, of, of God in our lives, they themselves will understand the gospel more. And those of you, or those of us who have had, this gospel, uh, had the gospel tonight, all over the world, on the preaching of tonight, about the unchangeable gospel, if you have not gotten it, go back to Calvary. The Lord is still in the business of changing lives to those who will believe the gospel and trust in the gospel. And our responsibility is to preserve it. We are not to do anything to mutilate the gospel or to make the, God, the power of the gospel to be minimized. Our lives and preaching and teaching and everywhere we find ourselves will be centered on the gospel and we will insist that those who are listening to us are born again, they are changed, they are transformed, they have hope of eternal life. That is the way we can conserve it. And whatever we are doing, we lead to the glory of the gospel and the glory of the almighty God. And by the grace of God, as we live out the gospel, we preach out the gospel, we preserve the gospel, we are not acquaintances and friends to those who are mutilating the gospel. We are not to be part of them. In fact, the Bible tells us, if any more any, any comes to us, and bring not this word, that we should not in any way be an acquaintance. We shouldn't even say bye-bye to him. But for those who say it, we'll be a protector of their evil. That means those who are mutilating the gospel and interpreting the gospel in such a way that it gives them the thing that I can see, but the thing that God wants the gospel going that it's not done, the people say they're doing evil. We can be partakers of their evil and we cannot join their evil. We only need to live for the gospel, preach the gospel, and make sure that the gospel we are uh, preaching is a gospel that changes life. That's why we ought to be grateful in this church. God has given us a teacher, given us a leader who has sacrificed his life and make available time to go into the scriptures, find out all this good uh, uh, information and, you know, all these valuable things that he passes to us all the time whenever we come here in Bible study. We need to be thankful to God for him and we need to pray that the almighty God will touch his life and whatever will make him to do it with joy. Do it with satisfaction and do it with fulfillment. The Lord will do it in his life. So that any time you come with joy and gladness, he will be dishing out this, uh, you know, uh, teaching unto us and revelations unto us, keeping us and preserving us by the gospel until the breaking of the day. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to give you all the glory. Thank you for what you have had tonight. Thank you, the revelations we have received. Thank you, the impact it has had in our lives. We are only asking, O oh Lord, give every one of us grace to be able to live out this gospel and preserve this gospel and defend this gospel by all means in the name of Jesus Christ. We are asking the Lord, the people, some of, some of the people that listen tonight, all over the globe, wherever they find themselves, in whatever country they find themselves, in Nigeria, outside Nigeria, in Africa, outside Africa, and the whole world. Lord, wherever they have received this teaching tonight, and the effect of the true gospel is not affected in their life. Lord, as they look unto you, and look, you know, see you as your savior, and confess their sins, and turn away from every iniquity, serve them, and let them test of the faithfulness and power of the gospel in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you very much. Lord, we give you all the glory. Continue to keep our leader. Continue to uphold him. Continue to strengthen him, and do all that ought to be done. And so with joy and gladness, he will be teaching us, instructing us, why the day is uh, breaking. Thank you, you have answered our prayer. As we go tonight, to pray that your presence and power will go with every one of us. Be glorified in our lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray.